you didn't catch last week's uh, video upload, we actually started a mixing contest. Since then, we've actually picked up a few sponsors, which is awesome. Indie Drums, uh, offering some drum samples. We've got Track Bids, Client Feedback System, 12 months of the Gold, the Middle Tier, Smart Reverb and Smart Comp. We've also got Isotope, RX-8 Advanced and Neoverb, which is like an AI reverb. Also, you get some coaching sessions with me, both the winner and there's a random selection. Basically, anyone can win that who's not in the top three. Without further ado, let's show you guys how I would approach the mixing prep side. Details in the description. Let's get into the mix prep. All right, welcome back. So the next part of editing that I want to take care of is one of the guitars. In my session, I've edited the drums and the bass. Basically, there are moments where I felt that the groove was not sitting in the pocket like it should. And I've picked up this guitar as an issue in terms of the groove. So let's play the song in that section without that guitar. And uh, let's just play the bass and the drums and that guitar. So that feels pretty good. Let's throw in this guitar. Now, of course, this is the DI, but I don't know if you heard it or if you caught that there. It started to get a little bit ahead of the beat, particularly this spot here. Have a listen again. As long as people agree in the band on where the time is as a group, I don't care if it's off the click. As long as everyone is slightly off the click and there's a certain relationship set up, then I think that can work. Where it doesn't work is where everyone disagrees on exactly where certain uh, subdivisions land and stuff like that. Now, I am also going to reference the grid. One of the important things to note about this song is that the grid, I'm actually going to use 16th notes, but it's triplets because it's a swung 16th note groove. There are moments where it's actually just 16th notes. Some of the snare fills and stuff like that are actually just straight 16ths. And it's a little bit jarring, but it's a, I think it's an artistic choice. I don't think it's a mistake. I think it would be a mistake to try and lock it into this completely swung grid. So the groove itself, it's not it's it's like a chili peppers groove. It is swung sixteenths. That's why I'm referencing that. We could look at this and try and lock it in. But what I want to do is I want to bring this up to the drum rooms and just see if we can't maybe eyeball it. We don't want to edit everything. We just want to edit the moments where it's a bit out. So I feel like that's enough ahead of the beat to bother me, especially that. And I think it's actually that note. If I shift that, have a listen to how that feels. Because everyone, uh, well, the bass isn't hitting there, but the it looks like the rhythm guitar is hitting there and also the snare drum. So it almost doesn't matter too much that he's playing a little bit ahead there. So long as that note there is um, pushed along a, a little bit back in time. So it's a little bit delayed now. And so, I mean, we could have gone in and edited that, but it wouldn't have fixed the problem because it's the relative time. It's how things relate before and after as to whether something like that works. And to me, I think that works a little bit better now. Maybe not where it finishes though. Where it finishes is quite important. And uh, let me just shuffle that along. Um, and it's how it relates, I think, to the hi-hat part. It's a little bit ahead there, or is it a little bit late? What, am I, what can I reference here? So it's kind of playing around the beat. It's gonna push that. A little bit along there. Let's have a listen. I feel like it gets a little bit messy there. Um, part of that is to do with the drums, I think. That doesn't quite look like it's on the 
doesn't look where it should be. Maybe it's okay, but maybe it's not. So let's test that theory. Let's push it maybe further there and extend that out to there. It was actually okay. So it's a 30 second note triplet. Maybe. Playing a little bit behind the snare drum is enough to kind of make it relax a bit, you know? In fact, I might do that there just a little bit. I'm going to push that a little bit. And now I'm feeling like this is out. So yeah, it's all to do with it being relatively out to the snare. something quite doesn't quite fit i think well there's a bass note that kind of lines up with that one so i might actually push it to be more in line with that and you can see in reference to the grid that's pretty much on the grid push that back again i think this note which hits with a snare drum let's get that sitting a bit nicer I think that'll do it. Okay, so I've just edited that guitar. Here's where it was. Very subtle differences, but I feel like these are the things that make for a good mix. Almost feel like that note needs to drop out. No, I can't drop it out. Maybe I need to make it it's almost like a, a mess up. Might steal it from there. Copy. Let's see if that works. Maybe it will be crap and I'll look like a fool. Maybe not. I might make it a little bit quieter just so it doesn't stand out as an edit. I like that. All right, I'm going to just what I like to do is, so we've got tab to transient there, but with it off, I can tab to regions and I can clean it up a bit so that those edits are not sloppy. Okay. Good, looks good, that looks good. And so you should be able to get now a sense of how nuanced editing can be when you're not necessarily just locking everything into a grid. You want that push and pull. That's what creates the pocket. And if you listen to some of James Brown stuff, every time a new instrument enters, it changes the relationship between all of the other instruments. If every beat stood still, you can have the snare drum here, and then you can have the bass playing a little bit behind that. Then you can have the guitar slightly ahead of the snare you know, and you get this kind of broad groove. So it doesn't all have to be locked together. It just has to feel right. And that's why I kind of favor doing it by ear. Uh, so next, let me just unveil some of the stuff that I've done editing wise on the drums. So let's have a listen to this. Looks like I've done a little bit there. It's my consuming it, tainted longer. So let's pull that 
back there. So we're listening to what was there. It's mine. Consuming it. Tainted longer. Mine. Consuming it. Tainted longer. Pretty subtle stuff there. Oh, here's a bit more stuff. Actually, I'm going to mute this guitar because we're going to get to that. It's pretty much human nature to speed up and slow down. I feel like this band in particular, when they know they're getting to an exciting bit or they're getting to an, another section, they kind of get a little bit excited and uh, it gets a little bit out of, out of whack. So let me pull all of this editing off. So that's all the editing removed on that section. Very, very subtle editing. You can probably feel that there's a difference there. Let me take that off again. It's so messy. So, so messy. Let's get on with the business of editing this guitar. This type of stuff, I feel like it's always how it relates to the snare because it's a, a higher pitched instrument. Snare is also higher pitched. So I'm gonna move that one there. Sorry, so my audio cut out for like a few seconds and I actually realized at the right time, so that's good. So just shuffle that along. What am I doing? Pressing the wrong key. I am kind of referencing the grid a little bit more. I'm also referencing the snare drum and the bass. Yeah, we'll pull that a little bit further. Sorry, we're referencing the kick drum. Referencing the kick and the snare. So maybe that one needs to go back. You see the uh, transient lines up with the snare a bit better. Nice. That to me feels like it's in the pocket. Beautiful. Love it. All right. Let's go in and just clean up all those edits. Nice and close. Yep, it's good. And that one, can take it to there. Easy peasy. that's that guitar done so what i can do is i can duplicate that and i'll put an e on the end if i want to denote that i've edited that what other guitars can we edit let's have a look so that was guitar two let's have a look at guitar three we bring that up to the kick and the snare so straight off the mark just going to move those across 
Maybe not. Maybe that's okay. Make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. So I'm going to move that a little bit there. For pay. Just going to kill these vocals for the moment. Okay, that's a bit better. So that looks like it needs to sit more like that. Yeah, nice. Okay. You can hear that it's swinging a little bit better. Now I'm referencing the bass guitar there. So it's just a little bit behind the beat there and that's fine because it feels okay. Let's get rid of the Hammond for a little bit. I'm going to turn off this rhythm guitar. quite sit does it don't know if I shifted that or if it's shifted itself it's gonna move that entire group so what I can do is I can perhaps just eyeball it you can clean this up later This is a little bit messy. It's a little bit too far behind the beat for my taste. And what actually makes it feel a bit weird is the fact that this is ahead of the beat there. Um, so we're trying to get them just to lock in a bit better so that that groove is consistent. Just move that so slightly. Maybe not, I'll leave it there. This needs to be somewhere like that. Sometimes it's not even the main hit, sometimes it's like the upstrokes on the guitar. I think whoever played this guitar didn't play it as a swung 16th feel like the rest of the band. Um, I think that is it for that guitar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that note to match all the others. It's a little bit more swung. It's not perfect, but it's probably going to be buried in the mix anyway. Could probably even benefit from being pushed behind. Even that. A 
It all feels a little bit ahead, except for to there, so I'm going to move that. Actually, even that can move, so I'll just drag that out. So I get it now. So that actually probably doesn't need to move. That there does need to move so that the transient comes straight after the attack of the snare. Yep, yeah, alright, so that's what I'm going to do for the rest of these. That should get it feeling pretty good in this particular case. Um, every mix is going to be different though, hey. Sometimes all it's about is just, a, you know, identifying patterns that work. So in this case, the pattern that works is that the transient of that rhythm guitar comes after the snare drum. That all looks pretty good. We do one last listen through. that's good enough for a what is going to be a supporting part let's do a bit of a cleanup some of these edits are going to be tricky for sure so that one doesn't look too bad this one say about there would be the way to go somewhere there That's not going to sound good, so probably there would be the way to go. So there. We'll do one last final listen and see that we got all of those edited pretty well. I'll probably pop it in there. Okay, that's the end, I think. Yep. happy with that guitar four let's have a look at that we've got one more after that which i believe is the solo guitar Need to do anything to that turn it down put it back where it was let's get into this solo guitar i'm pretty sure it's going to need some love so i think there's a bit of a clash there the very first note so i'm just going to nudge that along Um, I 
I think I want to move them a little bit later. Or sooner. No, it's definitely moved them. Um, huh. Tricky. Could be there. Okay, maybe that. Very subtle. Got a bit excited there. Very ahead of the beat. I'm wondering if that's meant to be where it is. Yeah, I like that. So that one's a little bit behind the actual beat. Sorry, the actual subdivision. And that seems to feel right. That feels rushed. And it looks rushed. I'm just going to chop that there and actually leave it like that. It's a little bit too far behind there, so I'm going to move that. Maybe not, maybe that's okay. I think it's the, the length of the note that really makes a difference, so you can even push it a bit further, maybe. It's because it's where it end where it ends is actually on that snare drum. That feels okay. The fact that that's a little bit ahead of the beat, maybe that works. Yeah, I think it makes it exciting. I'll move that one. Copy that one just a little bit. And that definitely needs to move. And that feels very rushed. How much better does that feel? Tell you what, in this bit here, feel like just the notes that hit with the snare, they can actually move forward a bit. Make sure that transients just after the snare hits. Everything else can kind of be a bit loose. <laughs> So that one there, that's going to be tricky. A little bit that way. Bit of a nip and a tuck here. 
So that's all the guitars edited except for the rhythm guitar that plays through the entirety of the song. But if you've paid attention up to this point, you probably figured out what my method is. Some of it's looking at what's happening, some of it's just kind of listening, trying to find a middle ground for some things, trying not to get too hung up on getting everything exactly perfect. It's okay if things move a little bit, it doesn't have to be exact. Thank you for watching. Stick around for the next one which I think will be the final one. I'll see you for that one. Cheers, guys. Yeah.